What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Pits. Today, we're going to do an unboxing, review, and partial teardown of a ThinkPad T460. And of course, since we well, since we're doing an unboxing, it means I get to play with knives. Yay! Oh yeah, that was totally worth the money I paid for that knife. Wow. Anyways, let's get into it. So, T460. Did I say T420? <laughs> it was T460. Oh, yuck! Oh, I hope it's just an old build for some reason or other. They're using the plastic pieces. I don't like those. I don't like those. So, the T460. I can't recycle these in my area. And uh, the other ones, the, the P50S has recyclable cardboard. I prefer that. You gotta take care of the universe for our children, etc. So on and so forth. Yeah, whatever. It uh, might not uh, sound the nicest, but it's true. Anyways, let's get into this stuff and stop talking about uh, the world that we gotta protect and stuff. So here we go. Bam! Just like that. Really light. Probably feels like about two carbon, uh, what are those? Lenovo Carbon X1 fourth generation. Feels like about two of those. There, bam, just like that. I'll get some lights on so you can see what you're dealing with here. So this is an i5 version. Uh, no keypad, of course. If I don't get a keypad, a lot of people ask me to disable the trackpad because it can feel kind of giant. So you got the little mouse button, of course. I wonder if anyone actually uses that middle thing. And this is about just under 15 inches. Let's see what we got on the side. We got, come on, autofocus. I can never tell if you guys can see this stuff or not. Anyways, so we got the plug-in. Oh, that's a pretty big heat fan area. Nice. Uh, and uh, one, two, probably three USB. Three USBs. You got your Ethernet. Of course, you need your HDMI. You got your uh, SD card reader. So, and Display Mini. What is it with Display Mini? Everybody loves display mini. Nobody loves display anymore. Looks like that's where you put the docking station. And this is one of those ones that have an unbelievably small battery telling you that there's going to be another internal battery within this thing. What is it with these Lenovo things that have internal batteries? Why do they do it this way? I mean, it'll make it extra hard if I need to change the one on the inside. And when I say internal, I'm not talking those little giant battery ones. I'm talking big batteries that are just inside there. Where is... Where the heck's the battery to this thing? The external battery. Oh, it's in here. I was worried I lost it or maybe uh, the dog ate it. You never know, dogs are really silly animals and they do whatever they want. So yeah, this buster is probably like a 64, 60, no, 68, 68. Anyway, she goes in there so nice and so calm. So of course, after I review these things, I like to tear them down. It looks like it's gonna be the kind of thing I just take those screws out and pop, pop, pop. I hate those poppy clips. I was worried you're gonna break them. So, yep, i5, I believe this is eight gigs of RAM. And I'm pretty sure it's 256 gig SSD. Always get SSD. Don't get hard disk drive. Always, always, always get SSD. Uh, hard disk drives, physical spinning platter ones. Pieces of junk these days. I keep getting them dying on me way before they should. I mean, in about a year and a half. I never had that problem back in the day with other ones, but maybe it was just my luck. I don't know. So, here we go. Let's get her on. Actually, while I'm here, while I'm looking at it, I want to see if it has a little bit. It does, right here. Okay, as I keep telling you, I had a client that uh, took one of these overseas. They didn't turn it off. They just closed it up. And when they opened it up again, they could not get this thing to turn on. So I had to make a call in, and it turns out that that is how you reset the CMOS battery right there. That little pinhole. You just press and hold it for about 10 seconds, and bam, just like that, she'll come to life again. Remember that. Remember that. Okay, uh, looks like I've got Windows 7 on here. I'm going to get this thing going a bit, take a look at what she's got on, and I will be back shortly. Actually, you know all this thing's loading, I should say. The T-Series is made for business, and it's also made to be relatively rugged. This is what I give to people working on factory floors. It's really hard to mess one of these things up on the factory floor. The only time I've ever seen one of these things mess up on a factory floor was when a lot of oil got under the monitor. Once that happens, you're not going to get it cleaned out. 
it'll evaporate over years and years and years but you're going to get a crazy looking thing on the screen so yeah this is about as rugged as you can get without being military grade you know panasonic ultra duty kind of rugged but still a very good system with the t-series since it is business you know they'll be supporting it they'll be drivers for it for a long time very good stuff remember the p-series is what you want if you want power the e-series is what you want if you want affordability and the Y series is what you want if you want power, but it can't be on the factory floor because they are dainty, let me tell you. All right, bam, just like that. I know you all can't see this, but I'm just going to tell you. The processor got 7.2, the memory RAM got 5.9, the graphics got uh, 4.9, the gaming graphics got 6.6, .6, primary hard disk is 5.9. Uh... So yeah, you're going to want to slap an SSD into this puppy if you get one, because it's definitely a hard disk drive. Let me just check real quick, because I want to make sure. I want to see how many video cards are on this. If you watch my previous videos, or if you're really used to laptops, you know that a lot of laptops actually have two video cards or two video chips. Display adapter. No, we just got one, the Intel Graphics uh, 520. The P-Series, the P50S that I was looking at definitely had too. So let me get this thing connected, updated, and then I'm going to run a benchmark on it. And I'll show you what I find. Then after that, we will get into the disassembly, or at least showing you how to upgrade the RAM. Showing you how to up update the RAM and the hard drive. Awesome. All right, so I just finished up the benchmark PC Mark 7. We got a score of 2,827. Intel Iris Graphics 520. Intel Core i5. So, here's the information we get. We get a memory bus clock of 800 megahertz. Let's see what else. Processor 2.3 megahertz. Turbo clocked up to 2.6. And, oh, we only got 4 gigs on here. Oh, well. Honestly, as long as we got an SSD, 4 gigs really isn't a big deal. Uh, 4 gigs is pretty good, and it's very, it's very rarely that most people actually need more than that. Of course, if you're playing video games, you want more than that. But really, for the most part, nobody needs more than 4 gigs. Of course, unless you're doing CAD. And the sucker up, take a look at what's on the inside. <clears throat> what I'm expecting to see is another giant internal battery because these external batteries are dainty. Please excuse my daughter, it's bath night. Bath time, I should say. So much like the other units that I've seen, I believe I believe I've broken down a uh, unit just like this. Huh. Okay, so you got your RAM right there. You have one space for an extra an extra stick. This is the Wi-Fi, and uh, if you guys out there are listening and you know, it looks like it's supposed to be where an M2 card is supposed to go, but I'm also seeing uh, antenna. So I'm kind of curious what that's about. Maybe it's for a second Wi-Fi card, a bigger Wi-Fi card if you want. Never heard anyone wanting that. I don't see why they leave something like that for consumer electronics. But no, no, an M2 would bring it up here. So yeah, if you know what that is, please leave it in the comments. And uh, of course, we get the hard drive. And internal battery. Oh. CPU fan coming over to the CPU. USB, of course we get uh, the micro internal battery. Seriously, what's with this? Why are we doing this these days, guys? I don't understand. I don't understand. It makes it harder to, you know, unplug everything and take the battery out if something crazy is going on. So yeah, I definitely like the system. It's nice and quick. It's powerful without being uh, too overpowered. It's good for the price. The only thing that I would say is get an SSD. You need an SSD for this thing. I don't even know why they even sell HDDs anymore. 
It can't be that much more to get an SSD. But seriously, SSD, just do it. The SATA SSD, it's great. They'll pump you up, no problem at all. I get a lot of people complaining when I move them from seven-year-old computers onto, onto new computers, and they're just not as snappy, and they freeze up a, a bit. And it's all because of the SSD. It's freaking amazing what those things will do. So that's it for me. Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Of course, I always appreciate it. And uh, take care of each other. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.